Uh, welcome to you. And also, Curtis Ellis, Policy Director for America First. He worked with the 2016 Trump campaign as a senior policy advisor. Uh, welcome to you both. Uh, Kristen, I'm hearing through the grapevine that you are extremely concerned, as a lot of Americans are, about the coronavirus, and you've got some specific issues with how the president is handling it. What's the problem? Yes, Greg. So I am concerned with how Trump has handled this. I think last night the announcement he made in terms of international travel is certainly a step in the right direction. But the question that I have is really, is this too little too late? You know, I think that we should have started this over 30 days ago at this point. And instead of focusing on what we're doing internationally, we really need to be focused on what we're doing domestically. I've called on Twitter several times now that, that I think that the United States needs a domestic travel ban. I don't know if it's going to happen, but those are the measures, the very extreme measures that need to happen here. I mean, we saw a story today where someone flew, uh, I believe, from New York to Palm Beach. Uh, when they landed, they found out that they were positive for coronavirus. And then you're looking at an entire uh, plane full of people who are testing positive for coronavirus. So instead of f focusing everywhere else, what about focusing here? Okay, thank you, uh, Kristen. Curtis, I have to say, I have not heard too many folks uh, call for the European travel ban. If anything, I heard criticism last night that it was unnecessary, just as there was criticism, as you'll remember, of President Trump back when he called for the travel restrictions on China. Uh, back in January. What are your thoughts uh, tonight? Uh, yeah, that was uh, more than 30 days ago when President Trump restricted air flights from China. And now everybody agrees that that was the right thing to do. Everybody except, of course, for Joe Biden, who called him a racist and a xenophobe for it because it goes against the globalist orthodoxy. President Trump has taken decisive action. He has uh, moved in the, in the direction of, this, of these travel restrictions. He has accelerated the vaccine development. He's taken steps to make sure that people, citizens, the Americans, who are afraid of losing their paychecks, losing their income because they may have to quarantine themselves or their businesses are closed, that they'll be made whole and that those businesses are, are made whole as well through the Small Business Administration and other things. Now, it's very interesting that today uh, Joe Biden uh, put forward his coronavirus plan, and what he did basically was crib and steal uh, President Trump's plan. And it's, it's very very disturbing because uh, President Trump has been right about this all along. We need a border, we need to be making things in America, and we need to be clear-eyed about the threat that China poses to our way of life, whereas Joe Biden has been responsible for offshoring all of our industries to China, yeah. pushing for right. open borders. Okay. But let's, Curtis, let's be Curtis, positive Curtis, here. We yeah, all need Curtis, to come Curtis, together. Kirk, I, I, I agree. We do need to come together. We need I to agree. Come together. But hold on one second. I can see that Kristen is... Uh, Anxious to get a word in. Yeah. There's no way that we can really say here that President Trump has been right all along regarding coronavirus. I mean, let's just clear that up because he hasn't. He has told people that this will go away in the spring when warm weather comes out. That is factually incorrect. We have no idea because we don't have enough data on this virus to tell the people of the United States that. He has said many things that just washed our hands that will be enough. He has said his administration has said many things that have directly gone against the advice of the CDC several times including that everyone can get a test. I live in Westchester County. Hold on. Okay, right, not right, everyone right. can. Kristen, here, here my my view of this Actually, you can do two things. You can go to the CDC.gov, great website. You can also listen either to what people tell you the president has said, or you can listen to what the president has said. And we can all do that. Granted, it takes time. We all could watch the 40 minute briefing from the CDC, and you can listen to what people say about it, and then you can listen to what he actually said. I remember what uh, he said about President Xi. He wasn't announcing that as fact. He just said, okay. President Xi called me and he said, you know what, this thing could be over by spring with the warm weather, with the warm temperatures. Who knows? Maybe he's right. I didn't find that, I didn't find that inappropriate. I thought that, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe. It wasn't a, an official policy decree. It's just something he offered. Uh, Curtis, and then back to you, Kristen. What do you think? Yeah, look, there's common sense things we all can do, and the president has been saying that, and the Vice President Pence, and the daily briefings that are coming out of the Coronavirus Task Force are very informative. Uh, we need to pull together. There's, this is not a totalitarian system here. So people, Americans, are going to conquer this through the actions that we do together. 
Uh, it's very important that we start rebuilding our self-sufficiency in pharmaceuticals and be able to supply ourselves with the protective gear and the medicines that we may need and, and cut through some of the regulations that have really been hampering a speedy response as we've seen in previous uh, crises. I don't disagree that that's important, but it's also important that we focus on flattening the curve. That is Absolutely. why we're taking these drastic measures that we are to shut down so many different things. I think if we look at what Cuomo has done, at least in the area that I'm in, he has done an outstanding job. And I'm not one to normally compliment what he's done, but he is showing real leadership and real guidance and real directive in that. Yes, sorry, and, and that's what, what governors area, do, what? and that's what mayors do in our kind of system. Yeah. We leave it up to local authorities who are closer to the situation rather than having the central committee I, of, I, the, of the I party tell this. everybody I, what to do. When I say, when, I, when I'm criticizing what he's doing, what I'm saying is that he is very clearly saying anyone who wants a test can get a test. And then we had uh, the other one come out and say, you know what, sorry, actually, we're going to have all these tests, but now you're not actually going to get the test because they're not available. I live in Westchester County. People who are trying to get tests, there are not tests for them. Okay, and hold on. Meeting the criteria All right, for I testing. understand, Kristen. I actually, again, I watched the entire CDC uh, event. I encourage others to do it. There are officials right there who said they were referring to public health officials. There are four million of these tests available. And by the way, I think the whole thing is a bit of a canard about the tests because. If you get tested, then what? If you're sick, you're supposed to stay home. Yes. You're supposed to stay home. So if you get tested, there is no cure. There's nothing we can do after that. Okay. And it's interesting that the person who brought it out on Capitol Hill today was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. That's the point that she was so concerned about. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, former DNC uh, chief who was fired in the middle of the DNC convention for cheating, for trying to help Bernie and trying to... I'm sorry, for trying to help Hillary and trying to hurt Bernie. I don't know. I think there's it, the testing issue has been overblown, and it doesn't work that way. It's not like a blood test. Hey, I want to go get a blood test and have my blood work done. That's not how it's supposed to happen. I'm not saying that is how it happens, but if you put out a statement that anyone who wants a test can get a test, well, you know what? You better make sure tests are available. Well, look, they've got drive-through tests in Colorado, but even there they make it very clear that you have to have a note from your doctor uh, before you can get that drive-through test. And the doctor will not give you a note unless you are showing symptoms and have been in contact with somebody who has been confirmed of carrying the virus. And you're right, Curtis. I mean, look, I really appreciate what you're saying, Kristen, but I, I'm on the other side here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just... Um, the issue has been overblown. People who <laughs> need the test, there is a way to get the test. And uh, we'll see what happens. I am concerned, by the way, that this has been exaggerated, that instead of messages from the CDC and uh, the websites and the professionals, the media have been looking for what they believe are the smallest discrepancies and magnifying them and trying to use it against Trump to hurt him in the election. I really think that's what's happening here. A lot of exaggeration, a lot of fear-mongering. I hope it stops because they're on the verge of wrecking the economy if they keep it up. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, I, am, I am deeply concerned. I think we're going to be okay, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that the hype is getting totally out of control. Curtis Ellis, Kristen Ruby, let's have you back, okay? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you both. All right. Stay with us. I am a little bit concerned, but I, I do think we're going to be okay.